time for milking anyway. I know. It was Kate's turn. Um, I'll do it. Okay. Uh, just thought you must have forgotten. No. Work's still got to go on, hasn't it? I mean, these animals don't know what's happening, do they? Yeah, sorry. You're right, Jack. Slithering won't help Kate, will it? I'm glad you're here, though. Yeah, me too. You all right? Yeah. You don't sound it. I was thinking about Kate. Still can't believe it. I better ring Joe, see if he needs any help. Won't Kim mind? Chris, I wouldn't have taken this job if I thought that Kate would end up in prison. I mean, they're going to be short-handed now. Honestly, Cathy, you turn up with someone's baby on your first day and you start talking about leaving on your second. Perhaps I can just go back till I find someone else. Cathy, you've left Emmerdale. It's not your problem. I can't let them down at a time like this. Look, I'll talk to Kim about it. Rather you than me. You haven't exactly got off to a flying start, have you? What about Dad? What about him? Well, someone's going to have to tell him. How can we, Matt? We don't even know where he is. Well, he's got to be told. We're just going to have to find him, aren't we? I suppose so. I don't know how, though. Do you know what the time is? You're not even dressed yet. I'm not off to school today. Oh, yes, you are. And you're going to work, too. Chris has told me I can take the day off if I want to. I'm not having you two moping about. Mark, get ready for school. And as for you, Rachel, the one or two errands I want doing in the village after you've taken Mark to school. You big bully. You haven't seen anything yet. Now, off you go. Go on. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how you can inflict that poison on your lungs. <coughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't expect you down yet. Oh, I can't see that that makes any difference. Oh, don't nag. Not this morning, anyway. I don't nag. You do. <laughs> yeah, don't put that pipe down there. You're not going to light that thing now, are you? Do I? Aye, you do. Ah, oh, well, worst part of giving up smoking is it makes you feel very superior over them as haven't. I know. <laughs> not that it's making that much difference. What do you mean? Passive smoking. I must inhale the equivalent of a packet of 20 in there every night. Oh, aye. You did your best, you know. Yesterday, I mean. Did I? Didn't help Kate much, did it? They're so damn clever, these lawyers. Get you saying things before you know where you are. Well, that's what they're paid for. Rum sort of job. Why don't you take yourself off for a walk? Bit of fresh air. Help clear your mind. That's a good idea. <coughs> oh, that is a mucky habit. See? Nagging again. Sorry. Uh. Well, what are the chances of an appeal? Well, I'm not bothered about the money. Oh. oh I see. Well, thanks anyway, Mr Trafford. Sorry to have called you so early. Mark. Morning, Joe. Morning. That was Trafford. I was asking you about an appeal. And what did he say? He advises against it. We can't just give up on him without a fight. Why not? But well, there's a chance her sentence could be lengthened if we lose. So what next? We're going to visit her. She's been moved to Lower Barston today. Come on, Mark. We'd better go, otherwise you're going to be late. Look, before you go, I've got something to say. You too, Mark. Look, what happened yesterday was a great shock to us all. I don't expect we've got much sleep over it. I don't suppose Mum did either. No, of course. But we've got to be strong and positive if she's to get through the next two years. She mustn't feel she's been forgotten. But she's locked up. Yeah, but she could be out within a year with her remission. And one other thing. Even though she's not here, this is still your home. 
Right, Ma? Of course. And it will be for as long as you want. Exactly. Now, next year's not going to be too easy. But as long as we all stick together, well, I know I, for one, will be able to cope a lot better. Joe, we know this is our home. And we need your help as much as you need ours. Yeah. And for Mum's sake, we'll be here when she gets out. All of us. Hi. Oh, morning. No baby this morning? Um, no. Look, I would like to ask you something, though. Oh? I've just been on the phone to Joe. The thing is, they're going to be short-handed, and I sort of volunteered to help out. What about your job here? They're in a terrible state, Kim. They really are. Well, they'll just have to work it out for themselves, I'm afraid. Apart from anything else, what would you do? Well, just to help out. Well, how long for? A couple of hours, a day, a week, a month? I just feel I ought to go back. I'd rather you didn't, OK? Hi, Ellen. How are you today? Oh, so-so. Good morning. Uh, Mrs Whiteley, isn't it? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. Lynn Whiteley, Kim Tate. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry about all your troubles. Yeah, thanks. He's a smashing little baby you've got here. He was as good as gold yesterday. He's lovely, aren't you? Listen, Cathy, I'm back to Birmingham today. Do you fancy a quick drink before I go? Oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm, I'm working. Well, you do have a lunch hour, Cathy. If you'd like me to babysit for you, I'd be delighted. I couldn't put you to all that trouble again. Nonsense. We're great chums, me and little Peter, mm. aren't we? <laughs> I'll tell you what, you bring him up here at lunchtime and then you and Cathy can go off for a natter. It'll be my pleasure. Alan Turner speaking. How may I help you? Well, the Hotton Dating Agency. Right. Oh, well, I, I'm afraid Mr Armstrong isn't here at present. C can I give him a message? Well, I, I am his employer. Bad news. Oh, really? Well, how about the kids? Hello, Henry. This is a nice oh, surprise. I, I felt I had to come down after yesterday. Pass on my commiserations. Okay. It's much appreciated. Well, thanks, Mr Trafford. Uh, sorry to keep disturbing you. Bye-bye. What do you say? She'll be given a visiting order when she gets to Lower Barston. She'll name me on it, it'll be sent to me, and then I can go and see her. Sounds a right old rigmarole. Yeah. Still, I hope to visit her by the end of the week. Joe, I, I had to come down and tell you how bad I feel about yesterday. That damn lawyer bloke had me tied up in knots. Forget it, Henry. It's done now. See you later. Bye. <sighs> Seems very positive. He's always better when he's busy. Oh, poor Kate. Being put away somewhere like that, it, it's a nightmare. Aye, it is. I have no option but to give evidence, honey. Oh, she knows that, Henry. We all do. If you'd refused, you'd just have been subpoenaed. We'll come to the same thing in the end. Yeah, but that doesn't make me feel any better. It's not as if she was blameless. How do you mean? Well, she was driving when she'd been drinking, knocked down Pete and killed him. You can't escape the facts. You did what she had to do, Henry. I know. But it's not just that I gave evidence against her. It's, well, she did wrong. She deserved to be punished. And you feel bad for thinking it? Yes, I do. I keep telling myself it was an accident, but at the same time... I think... If it makes you feel any better, I feel the same way myself. It's been preying on my mind ever since yesterday. I wouldn't wish prison on my worst enemy. Part of me wanted her to get off, and the other part thought, well, if I were in Bill Whiteley's shoes, I reckon that justice would have been done. Rachel? <sighs> Rachel! Look, I just wanted to tell you, I feel really bad about everything that's happened. Yeah, you're not the only one. I keep wondering if I could have tried harder to stop her from driving. I knew she was over the limit. Look, that's not going to do her any good now, is it? I want to see Joe to explain. Well, don't expect him to welcome you with open arms. <laughs> oh, I know he blames me. Look, he's got a lot on his plate right now. I really don't think he needs to see you. I just want to talk to him. Well, it's up to you. I'll call around tonight, OK? It's your lookout. You seem very calm about it all. 
Baby takes up so much of my time, I haven't had a chance to dwell on any of it. Yeah, thankfully. I don't think it's quite hit me yet. What did you mean by, for the time being, when I asked you about going back to Birmingham this morning? You thinking of leaving? You of all people should know what it's like, Cathy. Everywhere I look, I get reminded of Pete. Yeah, but you were happy there, weren't you? I thought so. Obviously, I was wrong. He was up to his old tricks, telling me he was going off on business trips when he was coming back here to see Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. It must be all the tension of the last few days. Do you think Kim would mind having baby Peter for a bit longer? No, I shouldn't think so. Good. Because I told Grandad I'd be back in time to cook his dinner. <laughs> Be a lot easier without the little in there. She's nice, isn't she? Kim. Yeah, she is. Right. I'll see you later at home farm then. Okay. Hey, they're not bad, are they? I do say so myself. Well, I'm an Anton bloke, aren't I? Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you supposed to be, Seb? What's wrong? Note, if you want to look like Dracula's uncle, that's up to you. Here, ah. give it to you. <laughs> the famous photographs. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. There's no wrong with that. Give me it to you. Now, let's see, who does this remind me of? Uh, Rudolph Valentino? John Barrymore? No, 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 I know. Bella Lugosi. <laughs> who? The chap who played Dracula in the silent movies. Right, give him back the thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How much do you pay for those, sir? Eight quid. Well, worth every penny, I'd say. Definitely, I've not had such a good laugh in years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Seth, the Hotton Dating Agency have been on for you. Your application has been rejected. You've obviously been using false particulars. Apparently, they're exactly the same as a previous client's. What on earth did you do? No, Mr. Turner. They say you copied somebody else's particulars. And that's what they said. Uh, hang on a minute. There isn't anybody else, is there? You copied mine, didn't you? Seemed like a good idea at the time. How dare you, Seth? That was private and personal. How would I to know that? Seth, you have been rifling through my personal files. You are the absolute limit, Seth. You haven't got the brains you were born with. You didn't do any of them things, did you? Powerboat racing. Death pile. <laughs> we're all a load of rubbish, weren't it? I thought what were good enough for you were good enough for me. Getting some stamps. Gonna write to my mum. Lynn. What? About Pete. I'm just so sorry. Yeah, well, you and me both, eh? Just how many ruined lives has this sordid little affair you had clocked up, hmm? You tell me, cos I've lost count. Look, you don't have to try to make me feel responsible, Lynn. What Pete and I did was very wrong, I know that. Is that supposed to make me feel better? No. I tried to stop him from coming to see me. Don't blame Pete. I didn't mean that. At least have the grace to stick by him. He can't answer for himself anymore, you know. I'm sorry. Sorry? You and your mother, between you, have wrecked my life. And you stand here with that pretty little face of yours and tell me you're sorry. Did you seriously expect me to forgive you? I don't need your pity. If you hadn't taken Pete's keys that night, he'd still be alive today. Thanks, Sarah. How are you feeling today? Oh, bearing up, you know. Yeah. I wonder how Kate is. Frightened, I should think. My testimony didn't do much good, did it? Prosecution made mincemeat out of me. Oh, I don't know. The judge sounded as if he was about to give her a harsher sentence. He did say he'd taken the character reference into account. Yeah, I know, but two years. Afternoon, uh... Tony. Seems wrong calling you by your Christian name. I'll try it. Well, I was wondering... Uh, Tony. Good. About concert. Now that Kate's 
not around, will it be cancelled? Oh, I shouldn't think so. I think in recognition of all the hard work that Kate's put in for the church over the past few weeks, it should definitely go ahead. So you'll be looking for some more turns? Only she never got round to asking me. Well, she has had rather a lot on her plate recently. Of course, I understand. I'm just reminding you of my availability. Oh. Well, thanks very much, Seth. I'll certainly bear it in mind. So what have you got booked, then? So I can work out what I'm going to do. Because I don't want to be doing something that somebody else is going to do. That wouldn't be fair. No, I suppose not. Well, we've got Cathy singing a song. She's got a beautiful voice, I understand. Oh, aye, she has, aye. She'll be needing somebody to accompany her, won't she? Say hello to Uncle Frank, Peter. Say hello. <laughs> hello Please, Uncle I'm Frank. busy. Oh, he's grumpy. We don't want to talk to grumpy Uncle Frank, do we? Do you mind? Ignore him, Peter. We'll play on our own. <laughs> you are a beauty, aren't you? Eh? <laughs> Come on, Peter. Let's go see Uncle Frank. Come on. There we go. <laughs> You. Oh, I've done it before, you know. <laughs> and not all that long ago, either. Oh, thanks, Dad. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Look, I can't sit here all day going gooey over baby. I've got calls to make. Had a very successful morning. Mrs Tyler's parakeet can now peck with the best of them. <laughs> oh, very cosy. Hold it there while I get my camera. Oh, don't be like that. It's only a little baby. You were one once. <laughs> he still is at times. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Half a lager, please. I'll get that, love. Oh, thanks, Seth. Mr Charlton tells me you're doing a turnip concert. Yeah, I'm singing a song that Chris wrote when he was 16, when he was in a band. Oh, he plays, does he? Very well, three instruments. Can't play them all at once, though, can he? <laughs> I suppose not. So you'll be needing a piano player, then? Um, yeah. <laughs> I suppose you'll be starting rehearsing shortly. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, Village Hall at seven. Great. I'll see you there, then. Listen, Seth. Seth! Afternoon. Well, I realise that today is perhaps not the best day to come visiting. You could say that. Oh, it's a bit niffy in here, isn't it? Get used to it. I suppose you do. That's a townie for you. Look, uh, I'm very busy. Joe, I've been through this sort of thing before. I've counselled a lot of people who've had to face exactly the same sort of crisis that you and Kate are facing. Admittedly, I've never been so close. But if ever you need any help, then just call me. Or come and talk, any time. Thanks. I appreciate that. And I mean it, Joe. I'm very fond of Kate. She's a fine woman. And we all make mistakes from time to time. She's going to need a lot of help from you. And so are Mark and Rachel. And there'll be times when you'll wonder where you're going to get the strength from. That's the time you call me. I will do. I promise. So, when are you going to go visiting? As soon as she sends a visiting order through. A couple of days, I hope. Right, well, when you do see her, if you don't mind, perhaps you might mention that I'd be happy to visit her, if she'd like me to, of course. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to see you. Great. Well, I'll uh, let you get on with whatever it is you're going to get on with. <laughs> and thanks. Oh, Tony. Yeah? Breathe through the mouth. That's the secret. Eh? The pong. Brilliant. Gee, <laughs> 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 you twit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you daft, you. Yeah, no, I am. I'm an awkward case. In fact, there's only one cure. And what's that? Want to come look at pictures with me tonight? Well, what's on? I don't know. Well, we'll have a look in paper. Um, yeah, all right, as long as it's not violent. Well, don't be ridiculous. We on, then? Yeah, I'll meet you in the wolf pack. Oh, great. So, are they? Hi. Hi. How's he been? Perfect. <laughs> Dolly was saying yesterday how much like his father he looks. I know. I suppose that's a sort of immortality, isn't it? You can't forget people when the children are still around. Yeah, my mum reckons I look like a grandmother. <laughs> that sounds suspiciously like an insult. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better be off. Thanks again, oh, Kim. No problem. Take care, Kathy. And Julie. And if ever you and the baby want a weekend in the country, you know where we are. <laughs> a bit difficult with Grandad just up the road. <laughs> well, <laughs> just send the baby then. <laughs> look after Bye. yourself. Bye. 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 
What a nice woman. Yeah, she's been through a terrible year. Listen, Kim, what I said this morning about going back to Emmerdale. Have you made up your mind? Yes, I'm not going. But you were right. This is my job, and I want to make a success of it. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I miss her. They all do. She's only been in prison a day. What are we going to do? Keep going, for her sake. Oh, on earth's that? What do you want? Can I talk to you a moment, Joe? What's the point? I've nothing to say to you. Please. We're in the middle of supper. Look, it won't take long. I just wanted to say... How sorry I am about the way things turned out. You're sorry? My wife is stuck in prison. You're walking around free. And you think sorry helps? Oh, what's the point? Why don't you just go? Look, it was me who persuaded her to go out in the first place. It was me who dragged her away from the scene of the accident. I want you to know that. And I want Kate to know it too. What do you mean by that? I'd like to visit her in prison. I want to talk to her. Now you stay well away from her. You caused nothing but trouble the minute you arrived. Making fun of Kate's life here with me. Well, she hasn't got a life here anymore, has she? You happy now? Come on, we'd better get off. We're going to miss it. Yeah. Do you want to come? If you don't mind, I'd rather talk. All oh, right. Uh, well, anything in particular? Letting out family secrets. Oh, that. Yes, that. Well, not what I want, say, help. Yeah, I it's just it would be terrible if it got out about Dad. Zoe, I won't spread it. Thanks. You're really very sweet, aren't you? Under that rough, tough front you like to put on. Yeah, well, you needed somebody to talk to, didn't you? Well, I'm glad it would make. Yeah, me too. <sighs> what was all that about? That woman. She tried to drive a wedge between me and Kate the minute she got here. If she hadn't turned up, none of this would have happened. Joe, she did turn up and it did happen. Kate chose to drive. I can't believe Fran would have made her do anything she didn't want to. I won't put anything past that woman. Oh, come on, Joe. That doesn't say much for Kate's character, does it? If Fran or not, she was always on a hiding to nothing in that courtroom. She was guilty. I know she was. That's the hardest part of it. If only I'd gone with them that night. I was invited, but I didn't go because of her. Fran. Now you're going to blame yourself. Well, why not? If I hadn't been so pig-headed. I mean, I could have gone, couldn't I? But did I? Oh, no. I had to make me point, didn't I? I couldn't go out for a quiet meal with my wife and her best friend. But don't do this to yourself, Joe. It wasn't your fault. But it was. If I hadn't been so bloody-minded, none of this would have happened. Pete Wiley would still be alive and Kate wouldn't be locked away. <laughs> 